get him, buddy. Ah, here you go. Little turd. Welcome back, everybody. Monday, August the 9th, Monday morning briefing, episode number 43. Huey's glad we're back. He's been crazy since we got back. We got back from Waco yesterday about probably 6.30 or 7 by the time we got everything broke down. As we talked about last week, we were at the Heart of Texas Leather Show, the first annual one there in Waco, Texas. We left here on Wednesday, probably around 3.30 or so. Got up there, we ended up meeting up with uh, Aaron from Maker's Leather Supply and had dinner with them and uh, met some a couple cool guys that helped Aaron out uh, the last couple weeks and one of them that works for him quite a bit and uh, got to hang out with them, get to know them a little bit and then got to the uh, hotel, got checked in and then Thursday morning we got in there and unloaded everything really early. My class started at nine. We taught a class on a repeating belt pattern. So basically, we were tooling one section of a belt pattern or two. Some of the folks did tool a couple sections because they needed help in connecting the pattern on how you kind of put those together and make the connection in there to keep it seamless. And so we got that class started about nine o'clock. Um, me and the kids and, and Claudia ended up getting the car unloaded before that. And so she did most of the booth setup. So if you did come by the booth and enjoyed that, um, and, and thought it looked good. I thought it looked fantastic. Uh, she did all that, her and the kids. So by the time we got out of the class, um, I went down there and, and they were already in the pool. The kids knew that the hotel had a pool there. So they were, they were over there swimming and having fun and stuff. And I checked out the booth and then met up with them. And then we went and had dinner and had just kind of hung out and got ready for the show on Friday. The show was amazing. It, um, if you came, I hope that you thought the same. I mean, there was so many vendors there, so much stuff. The Waco Convention Center, I thought, did a great job as far as accommodating everybody. And it was just a really easy show to get to, to get set up. Um, if you needed anything, somebody was right there ready to help. And we also judged the tooling competition that, that went on there. While we were judging that, we were there pretty late trying to get it it judge it was my first time to actually judge a carving competition i don't know a little apprehensive i was just trying to take my time make sure that i scored it the best that i could me and the other fellow that were judging we ended up staying there i think till about 11 30 and one of the guys that worked for the convention center was right there ready to lock up as soon as we were done he was in no hurry he was very helpful a very nice man did a really good job and uh, we were able to get that knocked out and get out of there. But like I said, the show was great. We met a ton of people. If you came by the booth and I wasn't able to shake your hand and meet you, I apologize. But I feel like I'm, I shook everybody's hand in that place. We had tons of people come by the booth and it was a little bit overwhelming, honestly, on Friday because I didn't expect that type of response. So um, we really, really thank you and I, I really appreciate that. And uh, all the people that came by and I visited with and got to hear a little bit of their story and kind of what they're doing and, and how they kind of connect with us on what content. Um, most people really love the podcast. We heard a lot of feedback, good feedback on the podcast. So we're really excited to hear about that. Pretty much everybody I talked to knew about the podcast and was really enjoying it. And it was cool to hear which ones were their favorites and kind of what they were taking out of it. We did hear that the pricing and the marketing uh, conversations on there we're probably top of the list as far as what people are interested in. So like we've done last couple episodes, we've talked a little bit about that. Um, I visited with quite a few people about their marketing and, and their pricing while we were there. And um, even some, some other guys that were teaching, I think they had a class on, on uh, pricing and marketing um, at the show. So that was pretty neat. They had a lot more classes than I, I guess I was aware of. I didn't know they did a class for veterans. They had a class on Saturday morning for beginner youth that wanted to try their hand at leather work or if, you know for kids that wanted to kind of get into it and uh, we actually had a friend that came up they live kind of near waco and they came up there it's one of my wife's friends they've been friends forever and uh they, she brought her son up there and he went through that class and we made him a little a little goodie bag with some stuff out of the booth and, and that kind of stuff to kind of help get him started and uh, he's he went home and, and she said he was just already making stuff out of that bag and and putting those skills to use that he had learned uh, during that class so it seemed like that class went really well I'm not sure who taught that one there was just a lot of things going on this weekend it was real fast and furious As I've been to we used to go to the US finals in Oklahoma City and of course we set up our booth trying to sell our saddles and our belts and that that type of thing um, this was our first show being on the other side of it selling to craftsmen. 
um, and just kind of, you know, we had the material packs there. And of course, uh, all the merchandise that Claudia does as far as caps and t-shirts and all that. But it was just, it was a lot different. And, and when you go to Oklahoma City and sit there for nine days, it, it sometimes it can drag. It's just kind of, you know, long days, um, long time being there. Some, some days are faster than others and this and that. But this show seemed to be just just go 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 the whole time like it was just solid traffic um i hope the turnout was good i'm not you know in the in the back workings of of this particular show with the people that put it on the leather crafters journal but i hope their numbers were good it looked like there was plenty of people um a good response and we really really enjoyed it we met so many people we met some folks from um indiana from maine i met somebody from chicago there was folks from hawaii in fact one of the guys uh from hawaii that came by i think i met a couple maybe from hawaii i can't can't really remember i can't keep it all straight but um we had one gentleman from hawaii that came and he brought me some hawaiian salt i've never heard of it really um and uh, i don't know if i can get it here or not but he brought a bag for me and said he follows us on instagram and sees that i like to cook and stuff and so he gave me this and said, give it a shot on some steaks and just see what you think. And so we are definitely going to do that um, here pretty quick. So we got that, and I, I want to thank him for that. It was awesome. He had a really custom, uh, cool custom mask that he was wearing, and uh, that was really neat to see. We saw so much stuff, People, whether it was on people's phone, they were showing me the projects they were working on, or if they were carrying bags that they had made. It was really neat to see just some of the leather projects that everybody's doing, and there was so much to see there. Um, at the show and it was cool because I got to meet a lot of folks that I'm friends with on Facebook that I know like other craftsmen that were teaching or uh, vendors and stuff like that that I've just never met in person I got to meet Seloy for the first time he was there um, he said that a lot of people were coming by buying goat skin so that's good I hope you guys enjoy that stuff um, it is really good we picked us up some while we were there of course we got a bunch right before we left and uh, we kind of walked around I didn't get an opportunity to walk around quite uh, all that much um, which was good that's a good thing I wanted to kind of be sure and stick in the booth and and help anybody that needed help with anything or, or whatever they were hunting for or anything like that or just meet people and kind of shake their hands but I did walk around just a few times kind of early in the mornings and stuff before it got going too much I made a stop by Barry King's booth and got a few tools just to kind of replace and kind of add to my tool roll. As I've mentioned before, some of my tools are getting a little old. Um, some of them are old craft tools that have just been, they still work fine. They're just kind of getting a little worn down and stuff like that. And so I'm, I'm slowly replacing them. If you go out there and you just go to Barry King's uh, booth or Bob Beard's booth or anybody else, and, and Clay Miller's booth or anything like that, and you just try to buy every tool you possibly need to do floral patterns, you're gonna drop a, a pretty big check to try to do that. So um, pretty much everybody, I mean, you get your, your starter set and then you kind of just add to it as you go along and, and do that. I mean, um, it, you can you can get into a lot of money really quickly buying uh, nicer, uh, nicer stamps and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with staying with the Tandy stamps that are out there and that kind of thing. I had a gentleman hand me a set of bevelers that I'm going to try for him. He bought a set for him and an extra set, and I, I don't know why he had the extra set, but he said, take these with you, because he's coming to the shop. Um, probably, he, I think he said in a, in a couple weeks or something, he wanted to come by and visit. So he said, take these home with you and try them, because if they if you think they're good, then maybe that'd be a good option for people that are getting in to Leathercraft and don't want to spend you know, 20, 30 bucks a tool. Um, it may be a good option. And since I do have a few, like I said, very few nowadays, but I do have a few craft tools that I still prefer to use, um, I'm going to go ahead and try those. And uh, maybe next week I'll talk about them and exactly what they are um, and, and then kind of go from there because the price was, was a lot cheaper. Like I said, they're not going to be as nice as, say, Berries or Clay Millers or, or even Bob's. They're, they're going to be, you know, decent maybe can get you by until you can step up a little bit. And some of those stamps don't matter if they're if they're a really nice custom stamp or not. You just need a decent stamp to do that one particular job or whatever it is on your floral pattern. But I ended up picking up quite a bit, um, for me, quite a bit of stuff. Like I said, I don't buy a lot of tools anymore because I've got pretty much everything I need. But I got a couple more vertical lined pear shaders or thumbprints. Um, I guess it wouldn't be thumbprints, but vertical lined pear shaders. I got, I've got a really tiny one, and I've been using it a lot in a lot of my tooling, and I, I used to not like the vertical line, but I'm getting to where I've, I've got certain areas where I like to use them. So I got a large one and a small one, um, or a medium-sized one, because I already have the small one. And then I ended up finding, I didn't know he had a real tiny crowner, 
and my smallest crowner doesn't work all the time because of some of my pedals and stuff they're just too small of a, of a curve so i went ahead and picked that one up and then i got a couple different flower centers these are just the um just an oval they're, they don't have the little seeds around it or anything like that it's just an oval i got a small one and a large one of those um, smooth one and it looks really cool i did it on this piece here on that flower and it looks really good when you use the flower center liner around that. And I think he sells too a little deal you can put in the middle of that big cedar and it makes it look like a pod. And I kind of did it with a little, just a regular cedar on these two. And it'll kind of look like it's open right there, like it's got a little opening in it. And then I got a really tiny mule foot just because sometimes I need one that's, my smallest one is a little too big sometimes. And then I got a couple veiners. Um, real thin veiners. One of them's just completely smooth and one of them is just more of a traditional scalloped veiner. And um, I'm not sure where I'm gonna use these, but I like, I like to have them if I wanna add a little bit more texture to a certain scroll or something like that. And then I don't know why I got these, but I got them because there's sometimes when you need to put, like in these two little pods here, um, you need to put just a real tiny little seed or a little dot on something. And I have one that's a craft tool, but it's just a tick too big. And so Barry had various sizes of these. So I got two little ones, like I said, just to have. You know, that's the kind of thing, that's, that's the deal that you really don't need all the tools that are there. It's nice to have them all, obviously, if you could buy every tool that he makes or somebody else makes. But you gotta add stuff like this just when you can, because I'm not gonna use these two very often at all. Um, but. I, need, I want them when I need them because sometimes this this that little seed or that little change is going to change the whole look of, of what you're doing. So, so I got those. I also, I, my boy and I, we'd gone there right, I mean, the show hadn't even opened yet, but Barry was in his booth early. We went by there and picked out what we needed and uh, we had walked off and I said, oh, we need to go right back because um, I needed two, I wanted to grab two more swivel knife blades and that way I had them because Christmas is coming, as we mentioned last video. So I don't wanna be scrambling if I break my blade. Years ago, probably four or five years ago, I had dropped my swivel knife. It just rolled off the bench. It didn't even fall on the point. It just, it hit just right on that concrete. I don't have concrete in here now, but it hit just right on that concrete and the, the whole blade just snapped off. And it, it's not a defective blade, it's just they're not supposed to be dropped, especially from a bench top height. But, um, and that really put me in a bind. I had to take some of my old swivel knife blades and sharpen them up right quick and just kind of get by with those because it happened like two weeks before Christmas. And so I really didn't have time to wait for to get a new blade. So um, that's something you might think about if you're real busy during Christmas time. It's real easy to forget about swivel knife blades because you have one in your, in your swivel knife and you don't really think you're gonna need one. Um, you might kind of think about that if you can maybe order an extra one i got two just in case i need it because when you get down it'll always happen right before a rush or right before christmas or a, trying to get a job done or something like that so it doesn't hurt to have a couple of these uh to, that, that will fit your swivel knife and just have them hit out somewhere over there on your bench so that you got them and then you'll you won't have to uh scramble if you break one or lose one or something like that so but yeah i i got uh also got a couple little basket stamps from him so i've got a really really tiny basket stamp and then one that's still kind of small but i got those two because i've got a, a, an array i've got some clay miller basket stamps um I, I don't even know i've got a few different types of basket stamps and i just like having those just because they're good filler and i figure on some wallets this would look really good with this really really tiny one now i would never try to do a saddle with that but um, I've seen it seen it done probably uh, but I'm not I'm not that big of a basket stamp guy but on personal items and belts and things like that I think the smaller they are the, the better they look especially when they're antiqued so I got picked up a couple of those um, you got to watch the basket stamp stuff uh, geometric stuff like that when you do go buying tools because those are usually pretty pricey they're not twenty dollars or thirty dollars which is you know enough money but um but a set stamp is going to run you you know probably closer to anywhere from 50 to 100 dollars, depending on who you're getting one from be careful with that if you're if you if you think they're just going to be the same price as the other tools because they're usually quite a bit more they're just more involved to make them but you only need one and once you buy it you've got it forever so in our tooling class we did draw up um everybody in the class did get our belt material pack the premium pack so it came with a, our normal handout so if you've bought that before they got the same handout with the uh, measuring uh, page, the worksheet that shows you kind of how to measure your blank and size it. And then it comes with a set of tooling patterns. So four different tooling patterns on a sheet. 
And so I drew up a new one for the class and then we made a ton of copies. And so we were kind of handing these out at the booth as well. When people come by, um, it was just kind of a, a special handout I just made for the show or for that class. And so I've got a lot of these left. So if you do purchase stuff over the next couple of weeks till these run out, I might, might print some more and just have them in the shop or whatever. Or if you come by, um, remind me and I'll hand you one of these. It's got um, some pretty good patterns on there. One of them is fairly easy. Um, then it's got these two, which are a little bit more complicated. And then we did, I did throw this one in there because we just recently did a belt with this type of intertwining scroll work. And I thought, why not? We'll throw one in there because I didn't know what skill level these toolers were going to be in our class. And I had one young lady that did choose this pattern and she did a really good job on it. She, she did. I, I kind of laughed at her whenever I went over there because I was like, you, because we were transferring the pattern and I showed them um, how I used the tracing paper and transferring that way. And I said, that's the pattern you chose? She said, yeah, might as well try the hardest one. So while you're here with me, you, you can help me. So she really didn't need a lot of help. She did a really good job on it. Everybody in that class did a really good job. I think um, most of them were uh, really interested to see the antiquing process and were um, pleased to see how, how well they turned out. A lot of them did. We had one person in there that did a great job on her piece as well. And she did a tritone instead of the two-tone. She ended up doing the, I think she did the background brown and then she did the outer edge black and it turned out really cool and so it wasn't that that finish isn't very difficult it's just time consuming um and we i was worried about time in the class if we were going to have enough time to, to tool and finish but we pretty much everybody was done tooling by the time we broke for lunch and everybody went and ate and some people stayed back and just tooled through lunch but by about one o'clock we were starting to do our dye work and then we did our finish work and all that kind of stuff and so it worked out pretty good i think we actually finished like an hour early and we just sat around and talked, I answered questions. We talked about marketing and pricing in that class as well. We talked about just taking orders and, and how we handle those orders and how we handle payment, you know, taking payment up front or taking half or taking payment at the end and some of the pitfalls with all three of those. And uh, it, was, it was just neat to just sit around and talk shop and visit with those folks and made some new friends and then got to see them all throughout the show. They kept walking around, I'd run into them in the show or whatever, so um, it was really cool. Claudia ended up walking around and found that uh, Leather Machine Co. had a big thread rack, so they had all the colors. So, of course, she went and bought, I don't know, eight rolls, eight spools of thread, and uh, she snuck back in the booth. She said, I'm going to take a walk. She snuck back in the booth with just all this thread. So she's got a bunch of colors. So And um, they, had, they seemed to have a really good show. They had a lot of machines there. Uh, I wanted to play with the strap cutter because we do so many belt material packs. But again, I just didn't have an opportunity to get over there and play around on that machine at all. And um, the, the 26 I've played with over at Aaron's, and that will be the next sewing machine that we get, will be the Class 26. I just think that machine is so versatile that if you are looking to get your first sewing machine and you're not going to do, if you're almost positive you're not going to do any kind of saddle work, um, heavy work like that, then I would recommend the Class 26 because it's it'll sew pretty heavy stuff i mean if you fit it underneath that foot it'll sew it um, but you might have trouble with skirts and sheepskin and stuff like that but outside of that that machine's got a little bit smaller footprint um, as far as how much space it takes up in your shop and i think it's just a real good versatile machine i want to get that machine and set it up for claudia with 138 thread um, have where she's got all her colors and everything and then she can sew you know bags she wants to get into working on some more bags and stuff like that um, possibly some leggings or something, but that kind of material, I think that machine's going to be a lot easier for her to handle. The the class four is it's a Cadillac. It's easy to it's easy to operate. There's no problems with it. But I've usually got it set up for sewing heavy saddle stuff. And whenever we want to sew a bag or something like that, we've got to make a few adjustments and then change thread out. And I just prefer not to have to do that. So that's what we're looking at. But as far as that strap cutter, I'm, I'm still on the fence. I don't know if we need one or not. All of our belt material packs, if you get them, they're all cut by hand. I cut them all with a draw knife. And and so they're, they're as perfect as my hand can make it. So they may have a little you know, a little wobble in there. By the time you get done tooling and everything, everything usually is, is pretty good. I've been cutting belts a long time, so they're usually really straight. If you get into the blemish pack, some of them may have a taper at the end or a little wobble or bobble in there somewhere, something like that, but we haven't heard any complaints. Um, in fact, we took, at this show, we took, I think I took 50 premium belt packs, and then we took, I think 25 or 30 of the blemish grade, which is about all I had. And um, I think we came home with four blemish grade and then um, 
I don't know how many of the we didn't sell a whole lot of the premiums but we had a really small booth so our booth was only 10 foot and so we didn't have a whole lot of room to really put all the product out so we just had kind of samples out on the table and then everything else you know if somebody wanted one or wanted something you know we could either refill the table or, or pull it out and, and get it for them out of there and so I, I'm, I'm sure some people probably didn't know we even had them with us or whatever but um, we've got we sold a lot of material um, packs and wristlet purse packs and wallet packs we had a ton of uh, bifold wallets so a lot of those money clip wallets we took a lot of product with us that was finished but they were mainly we took those as samples so that if you were looking at one of our pattern packs that we had you could see a finished product and put your hands on it and kind of see how it how it's supposed to be constructed based on the pattern and stuff like that so that was cool um people really liked looking kind of at something i made that was you know in their hand close up they kind of look at the stitching look at the tooling see how i kind of constructed everything and um we gave out a lot of tips you know some people had already made the wristlet purse a few times and had a few questions on um improving improving their product and stuff and so i kind of showed them on uh, on the finished one we took kind of what i did the Yoke Tote got a lot of traffic. Claudia carried that to the uh, reception. The Maker's Leather Supply and Herman Oak and tons of other people sponsored a reception uh, Thursday night. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it was Thursday night, and um, so she carried it there, and, and a lot of people were there that, that knew about that bag, so they came up and looked at it and stuff. And then it was in the booth, and it got a lot of a lot of traffic. A lot of people looked at it and wanted to see it up close, so they could see exactly how I did those end pieces and stuff. And um, it it was a it was a neat piece to have have there in in the store. We were actually right beside Martin's Mix, and so if you remember, I don't know, it's probably been a couple months. They had sent us a little sample to try, and then we ended up we ended up trying it. But it had taken me a while to kind of put it remember to put it in the Monday video and stuff. But that stuff works really good. And I kind of visited with Justin and his wife a little bit on on that product, and um, they had a really good show. There was a lot of people there um, trying that stuff out. And, um, and I got a little bit from him that I'm going to try. It's a little bit of a new thing that he's trying to do, and uh, we're going to give that a shot. But that stuff's really good. I haven't completely integrated it into my process yet. Uh, again, not, for no other reason than just I'm old and set in my ways. So I've um, been doing it so long with glycerin and water that it's just hard to, hard to break that. But I'm going to try, try this new stuff he gave me too, and uh, I've still got the bottle that he sent me. So we're going to try to work that in just a little bit more. The interesting thing with that was that um, the one piece I had tried a little bit had gotten kind of off the edge and when I oiled it you could see the spot where it was but then when I came back about I don't know 20 minutes later um, it had the oil had penetrated through and it was gone so I'm sure it wouldn't be a good idea to wipe it all over the top of your leather but if you get off your edge a little bit it will float out and it does go away so that was good because I've used some stuff before where it didn't go away and it kind of had a discoloration so you had to be very careful um, not to get that on uh, outside of your edge cut where you, where you edged it, but we really liked that. Lo enjoyed meeting them. They were super nice. Um, my kids were all over the place, so they, they were running around and having fun and making friends themselves. And and uh, Justin's wife ended up uh, babysitting them a little bit yesterday, as far as that. she had a little iPad out there playing games and doing stuff, and they were hanging out there. And but they spent a lot of time in the Maker's Leather Supply booth, which was right on the other side of us. And so they were helping uh, Aaron and Janie Sue sell their product so um, I'm, I'm expecting that we'll get the the kids will get a commission check um, on all the sales that they did I mean they really busted it in there I mean I don't know if Doc could have done it without them really and uh, you might give Aaron a call there at Makers and just ask him um, you know if, if, if he's found a way to hire you know those two legally because they're you know they're five and seven so can't legally hire them but but um, but I know that that they probably couldn't have done that show without those two underfoot the whole time. And uh, I want to thank Aaron and Janie Sue for being patient. I got on to them a few times because I didn't want them over there bugging them, but they were they seemed to be absolutely fine with it, and and, and we're glad to have them in the booth. But um, that's what happens when you travel with kids, I guess. So they they were all over the place, and they don't meet strangers. So they they were making quick friends um, in there. But the show was great. We really really enjoyed it. Um, so thankful that everybody came out and that we had a good show and everybody was able to make it that was if you weren't able to make it I don't I'm not going to speak for them I hope they have it next year um, I would assume they are I don't know for sure but I guess time will tell but I would assume that they are they are probably going to but it was uh, really good I guess the next one now is going to be in Wichita Falls there will be one of the boot and saddle makers roundup it'll be the, I think the first week in uh, first weekend whatever in Wichita Falls um, in October. 
you need to check the dates on that. I don't have a link or anything like that for, for that show. I don't know if we'll be going to that show. I would probably say no just because of us being kind of full throttle in, uh, for Christmas and stuff, and that's usually been what's kept us from going to it in the past is just the shop being too busy. Um, if we can make it, we will let you know on the Monday videos. But um, but that is a good show as well. That's an old show. It's been around a long time, and th there's uh, a lot of stuff to see at that deal as well, and they have some competitions and stuff. So if you get a chance, you might go out there and, and check that out. Like I said, it's the first weekend in October, and it's a Friday-Saturday show. There's no, no show on Sunday. Um, and they used to do a tool swap where guys would just bring old machinery and tools and stuff like that and set up in the parking lot the day before the show started. And you could get some really good deals and find some really cool machines. I don't know if they do that anymore. You might need to uh, research that a little bit and find out if the boot and saddle makers roundup still has the, I think they called it a swap meet or something like that the first day. And uh, that was the one to get there for because you could find some really cool tools. And then after that, I guess uh, uh, we'll get into next year. There won't be any more shows for the rest of the year. But if you've never been to one of these leather shows, and if you missed this one, um, Try to put one on your calendar for next year. They're really worth going to. There was some. Uh, there was a guy from Pennsylvania who drove twenty something hours down to Waco to come to the show. It was his first leather show. He got to meet a lot of people there, and he was just. I think that guy. It was like drinking from a fire hose for him. He. It was so much in there um, because where he's at in Pennsylvania, there's not other than Tandy or something like that. There's really not a lot of. Uh, leather leather businesses and things like that for him to experience so i think the show was really good for him to put a lot of stuff into perspective and uh and get to meet a lot of people and see what the community's like because the leather community is amazing um you'll you'll meet uh, people from all walks of life from all countries from um, all disciplines not everybody builds cowboy rigs not everybody builds you know uptown leather like odin leather goods everybody everybody does all kinds of different things um and so it's really really neat leather has a place in any kind of you know style or genre or anything um i guess unless you're a vegan if you're a vegan you probably wouldn't use leather but that's okay other than that leather fits everything else out there in some form or fashion and so it's really cool to see the community and everybody's so nice and and um and really welcoming and, and it's just a really cool deal and so we really enjoyed it so I was hoping while I was there, I was going to take some video, maybe just a little bit of video here and there, maybe kind of do a little um, interview introduction with some of the vendors and some of the people that we deal with and stuff. But again, I was not able to even walk around during the day. I, I couldn't get out of the booth kind of deal. And so uh, unfortunately, I just I never even took very many pictures. My wife took quite a few pictures and stuff, and I'll try to post some of those maybe today if I can get them from her. Um, she shared some stuff on her her Facebook page and stuff like that. But but there was a couple of guys that were there that did film. I'm sure sure some other people did too. Um, I know Odin Leather Goods. He did um, film a little bit, and he had a little. I think it was on his Instagram. He had a little bit of stuff on there, a little video that he had made from walking around. We got to meet him in person. That's the first time we've ever met in person. We did the podcast together and stuff, and he's actually been down here a few times, but our schedule just couldn't match up. I was either at a cow show or he was having family time, and so um, was just kind of focused on that. And But he actually has a place right down the road from us um, near Gonzales, and so he's been down here a few times. said next time he's going to come in the shop, and we may shoot a little video or something and, and, um, and maybe – chop up some leather or something together here in the shop but we got to meet him and his wife and his beautiful family it was really really cool to uh, hang out with them for just a few minutes before they were headed out and uh, but then there was another fella too attack line leather and uh, he's on instagram he did a little video teaser i saw this morning on his instagram page and uh, i'm eager to see kind of what he did with it it seems like it's a teaser so i'm assuming he's got a full video coming out or something like that but he was a really nice dude he came in and we visited quite a bit and he actually lives really near us so i expect him to come visit us here at the shop as well so there's just so many people i met um you know thank everybody individually but if you if you talk to me and you were came by the booth we really appreciate it even had a few people that wanted me to scribble on a cap for them or something like that so that was that was kind of kind of fun i've never had anybody ask for my autograph unless it was for a speeding ticket or at the bank so that was pretty neat to get to do that um on a few i don't know what they're worth now probably less than what you paid for them but i appreciate anybody that did ask me that but now we got back to the shop we got back yesterday like i said late and turned the dogs out and just hung out and relaxed and tried to just chill a little bit and um i got here this morning early and ended up unloading the car and got out everything in the shop and i've just got a pile of mess out there on the retail floor that i need to kind of sort through we have got a lot of stuff um, i cut so much stuff for the show knowing that 
I didn't. It wasn't worried if it sold at the show or not because it, it's going to go on the website. So we will put a lot of that out there on the website. Update a lot of stuff as far as shirts and caps. We will be doing inventory today because we sold almost all our shirts. Um, we do have quite a few left, but a lot of the sizes are sold out. And I was blown away by how many of the shirts sold. Um, Claudia had a big old pile on that table, and I remember I think it was Saturday about lunch or something. I had turned around and I didn't even I hadn't even been paying attention to it, and there was a I mean there was not much left. So we really thank y'all for that. But we've got to get some new shirts ordered. We've got a couple of new designs that I'm working on that I won't tease out until I kind of finalize them. But I think they're going to be cool. And they'll be, be kind of, you know, funny tongue-in-cheek kind of t-shirts like our I Love Cow shirts, which was probably our hottest seller at that show, along with our, our logo shirt. But, um, but yeah, caps and shirts, we've got to check on inventory on those. Um, so if you go to the website, you might, and, and, or if you bought a shirt last week, you might get an email from us if it's sold out, but um, we'll get you taken care of either way. But we've got, like I said, I've got a lot of belt material packs left that we'll put on the website and update that. We've got a lot of wallet packs, a lot of bifold wallet packs. The uh, we got the money clip and the bifolds. We've got quite a few of those, knife sheaths, all that kind of stuff. So we'll put those on there and uh and get to cutting some other stuff as well we did on wednesday i was hoping i had a leather shipment that i was hoping would get here before the show i'm kind of glad it didn't because i couldn't have i couldn't have fit anything else in my car when we left out of here so it's probably good that it didn't but um wednesday i was here loading and the fedex freight guy called and said i've got your leather and that was at noon and i was leaving it i was going to try to leave it too and so he barely caught me, but we ended up getting it unloaded. The beer distributor behind us, luckily, was on his uh, forklift and ended up unloading it out of the freight truck for me and put it right there in my shop. So um, I told him I'd buy him a beer, but he's got a whole storage facility full of beer. So um, maybe I'll get him something else, make him a wallet or something. But that was pretty handy that he unloaded that for me. But now, so we've got a full pallet of leather back there that uh, we haven't even opened up. So at some point this week, I'm gonna cut into that. I don't know what I'll cut out of it because I've got a lot of belts um, and that kind of stuff, but I'm sure we'll cut some more. We might cut some portfolios or something. We're gonna try to cut a bunch of stuff so that you guys will have access to material packs way sooner than, than, you, than you need them during Christmas. So that if you're trying to get your inventory right for your Christmas orders, that you'll be able to order those early enough to where you've got plenty of time to work on them um, we'll certainly sell you some the week before Christmas as well if you need them. But um, as you know know as well as I do that the shipping is going to be cutting it close. But so we're going to try to keep everything filled up so that in uh, you know starting now if you want to start getting stuff so that you have inventory for your Christmas orders then we'll have that have that going. But as far as those material packs, we got to visit a lot with the guys at Herman Oak and um, kind of visited with them in the evening quite a bit. And they are just really, really excited that what we're doing is getting Herman Oak into more people's hands. Because we talked about that in the uh, in the class, as well as talked to people in our booth about that as well, of trying to get them to work with good material. Because um, tooling a, uh, a material that doesn't color as well, or doesn't dye as well, or doesn't hold a stamp as well, um, can really be frustrating if you're trying to learn and you're kind of getting moving forward and, and you're trying to really improve um, you always want to start with the best material you can, so you don't want to be um, trying to fight the material. Um, and so it, it, they're they're really excited that the, uh, of what we're doing, just because it is a lot easier entry point for people to to get their hands on a piece of Herman Oak and tool this, and then have a comparison between this and then wherever else you've been getting leather from. Most people, when they start out, they're gonna tool and import leather that's cheaper or something like that, and you're just not going to get the color and the burnish in your tooling specifically, and um, and, and you're probably not, uh, gonna have a little bit more trouble with your dyeing and, and, and painting and stuff like that just because of the material that you're working with. So that's one of our goals when we started doing the material packs was so that we could get good material into your hands so that you can kind of experience that and then understand why the price is different because um, it's very hard to justify the price man when you start out it's really hard to say oh yeah i'm gonna go spend 250 dollars on a side of leather and i don't i just started and so uh, it's got to be best you know it's got to be high it's got to be good we're going to use that um, no we all start out and we just buy belt blanks from whoever has them and we tool whatever leather we can find but as you go along um, you know you start looking at different ways to improve and stuff like that and I always think that the the first place to improve is to be sure you're working on good foundation which is the material that you're building on so um, and Wicket and Craig's a good leather too but Herman Oak is my my choice and that's that's my preference and so that's what we we've cut that for over a decade now 
Um, I, I had a short stint where we built on Wicket and Craig, and I have nothing against Wicket and Craig. It's really good leather. I just feel that the Herman Oak has better temper, and um, and it wears better on saddles specifically, and I like my belts out of it better. And so that's what we tool. That's what we have tooled for, for over a decade for sure. And, um, and so that's what I'm going to cut for you. So every kit that you get from us outside of the, you know, the interiors, the wallets or, you know, or, or the chap leather or something like that, all the veg is going to be Herman Oak. So if you haven't tooled Herman Oak or if you visited with them when you were at the show and you're just trying to, uh, you know, is it worth it? You know, we had one guy in the booth that does it's just unbelievable work. He does portrait stuff like, you know, art pieces that hang on the wall. He doesn't, I, I'm not sure he makes belts and wallets and stuff, but he was showing me some pieces that he does and some airbrush painting and emboss work and stuff and it was just it was unbelievable he just experienced his first piece of herman oak and he said that's all i'm going to tool from now on and this is a guy that's he's upper level as far as his skill level and his and his ability and uh, he just now got a piece of herman oak to try and um and so i'm glad because if he's where he's at right there on the other leather that he's been using um it's going to be just straight up from there uh doing it with herman oak so like i said if you've been wanting to try some you know buy, buy a wallet kit or you know or come by the shop i'll hand you a piece of scrap you can go home and tool on that if you want just to know the difference and just feel the difference but i think you'll i think you'll enjoy it but the main thing about it is with leather work if you that was your first show if you're just getting started just get some leather and get keep working on it keep tooling don't be scared to mess it up don't be scared to just you know get those new tools you got this weekend and just get in the shop and pound around that's what I did this morning. I got here the first, before I even unloaded the car, I had to get a piece of leather and get these new tools I got from Barry and just sink them down into some leather just to kind of play with them. Um, and, and that's what leather's about. I mean, you're not gonna mess anything up. If you do, we can get you some more leather. It's not a problem. But just get in there and, and get after it, and give it a shot. If you came by, I was glad to meet you. If you didn't, maybe next year, or if you're in the area, come by the shop. Um, I expect we'll probably have quite a few, quite a few people said we're coming. I'm gonna come see your shop and all that. You're always welcome. Um, like I told everybody there, um, one thing, if, you, if you're making quite a drive, if you're coming kind of, you know, two, three hours or, or even out of state, we've had some of those, um, you might just give us a holler and uh, shoot us a text on, at the shop or call us and say, hey, I want to come this day, you know, one, two o'clock in the afternoon, whatever it is, and just so that I know you're coming so that I'm sure to be here. Because there's sometimes I may just uh, take off out of here, especially if Claudia's not paying attention, I might just load up and go sit under a shade tree or something and and just relax and kind of get out of the shop. So I want to be sure and be here if you're if you're coming here. So um, just be sure and send us a text. But I'm gonna go ahead and get off of here. I got a lot of stuff I've got to unpack and kind of get my shop back in order. It's a wreck in here. I mean, when I left that here on Wednesday, there is stuff just slung out all over the place. The cut room back there is just a total mess. So I'm just gonna spend today cleaning. Uh, I got a few phone calls to return, check our email, that kind of stuff, and uh, just kind of get the shop back lined out because I've got I've got to get on saddles now. Now that weight goes behind us. We've got to hunker down on saddles and get, get those moving forward and uh, start ramping up for Christmas. We talked about that last week. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it every week, and it might annoy you because it's hotter than Hades out here right now. But if you're custom and retail, Christmas is about to start. I'm September 1, it's on. So just uh, get it on your mind and get ready. But I've got to get some of these saddles kind of moved before we get into that rush and, uh, and do a bunch of stuff like that. And we might have some other stuff that we're doing here in the shop for the DG Leathercraft side of the business. So keep an eye out for that. Be sure and sign up for the Leathercraft newsletter. If you haven't already, go to our website. It's easy. There's a form on there. Name, email, you'll be on it. And then whenever we announce anything or we have special things that we do with the newsletter, you will see that and uh, have access to that and stuff like that. Uh, be, to, be sure to do that if you haven't already subscribed to this channel. And we'll see you next week in the Monday Morning Briefing. Thank you, guys.